massive round of applause to Tide, who is played by the wonderful and beautiful musical talent as well, <laughs> Savo Donald. the applause for a lovely actress who wasn't able to be here tonight, but she played Frankie, who is Kyron's mum, and that's his dog girl. <laughs> and lastly, I would like you to continue that applause and introduce you to a now actor, a very, <laughs> a very, very talented man of many forms, Toby Morley. A little Q and A started. I just wanted to say a huge thank you. I could rave on to for days, but I won't. Um, it's insane. Me and Jimmy just wanted to make this film just for us to make some art and to have some fun. So to see that there's like a hundred people who are all of our friends and family is seriously insane. And I can't thank you guys enough for buying a ticket, being here, supporting along the way. So a round of applause for yourself, please. left till we have to skedaddle out of here. Anyone didn't realise, uh, we're going to go to Verity Lane Market, which is a bar just in the city, so please join us if you can. It'd be lovely to have some drinks and catch up. But yeah, we've got about 20 minutes, so we thought we'd do like a bit of a Q&A. Um, there's a few filmmakers in the room, but majority of people aren't filmmakers, so if you had any questions about the film or about the experience or anything, um, yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to start with Braden John Bird, because I know he had a burning <laughs> question. <laughs> But yeah, I'd really love for you guys to ask some questions of Sab or Toby to put them on the spot. Because uh, I didn't tell them this was happening until like a couple of days ago. Stitch <laughs> up. So I had a question about the set design yes. and if there was any Easter eggs in there that we didn't see. Yeah, so it was a conscious effort from the start that set design was going to be a big part of the film. Um, because I think it tells you a lot about character. But actually a lot of the set design you don't actually see in the film because we decided to shoot on some pretty close-up lenses. So the house, thank you, Mum, was completely <laughs> trashed. I trashed it, like, trashed it. So you didn't see that much. But yeah, it's, it was a lot of fun to um, uh, decorate Kyron's room as well to show his character that despite living in Canberra, he was a surfer and a photographer and things like that. Um, but there were two Easter eggs in the film that you might not have caught. Um, and they were, I wanted to put them in because there were two Australian films that really inspired me writing this because it's my first ever script. Um, and they were Six Festivals, which is an Australian film. And that was in the form of a poster, which was in the party scene. And then the second one was a film called Bosch and Rocket. And that was like a little sticker that was on Kyron's guitar. <laughs> Next one, if there are any. Oh, okay. Yeah, obviously a beautifully shot film. I have to ask, what was the most difficult shot to get? Oh, uh, I reckon it was probably the argument in the kitchen, because we shot that on such a really tight frame. So it was really hard to, one, keep them in focus the entire time, and two, keep them in shot because it's probably just that. So I reckon that was probably the trickiest. Oh, we lost it. Right. Loud voice now. Loud voice <laughs> um, And then some of the other scenes that were shot in really dark environments were kind of tricky because we wanted to light it up, but we had to make it look natural. So that's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was there any um, planning or thought process in regards to where you did your location shots? Was there any meat behind the areas or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. So it took us a little while to decide um, where we wanted to shoot like the um, emotional scenes with Jess, Karen and Tide. So the one that ended up being at Lake Burley Griffin. Originally it was going to be in an area near my house, which is like sort of near the Magpies Club, sort of around the Brenda Bellas area. <laughs> but then Jimmy was on a shoot or something and he was like, the sunset was fucking mad over the <laughs> like we gotta do it. And me and my friends spent a 
lot of time on that hill during COVID because uh, you could go to that place. So I thought this is a really nice place. And it also shows off Canberra because we want to show that Canberra has some fucking good films and it's a beautiful place. So, yeah. Shelly, I know uh, this story is very important to you, very uh, emotional and something you're really connected to. So there's a question for you, but also for anyone else. How did making chain impact you? Oh my god, that's such a nice question. Um, I can hands down say that this experience is the best creative experience of my life. I've been really lucky to be involved in a lot of the production of art in many forms, but um, it was so important to us that through writing the script, we got really authentic characters. Sav is a friend from high school and Toby I met through work, and I just couldn't picture anyone else in these roles. And Jimmy's the best mate, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> from way back. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been the best experience of my life, um, and it's just, really like taught us a lot about ourselves, I think, but I'd love for you guys to answer because being an actor is a whole different vibe to being the filmmaker, so please take it away. <laughs> um, I, yeah, when, when Tilly called me up for it, um, it was, it came at a really good time in my life. Um, I'd just gotten out of uni from last year um, and to be able to move home from Sydney was, uh, it was a big move, but to kind of continue that creativity for myself in Canberra with somebody who I've known for a few years and then get to meet these two lovely boys here, um, <laughs> was really special to me. So yeah, it came at a really um, important time and, and I was always just, I create I crave creativity and making things. So we, um, we shot the film over quite a few months um, based on all our availability, because we're very busy people. Um, so all the shots that you see in there were kind of shot between, what, February and May? February and the 14th of April. And April, February and April. So you've got um, some shots there and scenes where it looks like it's all in one day, but it's actually across a couple of months. So um, it, was, it was really good that we were able to kind of get together every few weeks and, and have another go at shooting things. and. Yeah, it just it brought me a lot of happiness and kept me going, so it was important to me. But thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was really my first step into any sort of acting and screen work. And you! Fortunately, you! Uh, um, and you know, I'm really thankful to have done it with this team. It's really beautiful. I felt really supported along the way. But as far as the storyline and into translating it into meeting Kara and is a, a really lost character from really shaky pillars and I was coming into a new medium and feeling a bit shaky myself. Um, there's a lot to be related in both experiences I think. Obviously domestic violence and a new experience making a short film with your friends, not comparable, but um, that experience of feeling lost, feeling shaken, not having two feet on the ground really allowed me to translate that script into something beautiful. So just just to keep that one going. Oh that's all right. <laughs> well knowing that it's it, it, it was your first time on stage but also knowing that you um, you know you have a band and you you're, you're up on stage and you have that microphone and a guitar to sort of get behind. Um, you look very vulnerable without those those tools that you're so comfortable with. Can you tell us a bit about the experience of, of you know, discarding them and, and just being there, yeah, you know, without those things? It's a perfect comment to just how vulnerable it does feel. Music's a wonderful facade um, through your voice or through a song. You can sit behind the music and feel good in front of others. Um, particularly acting in a, in a smaller space, in front of just a camera as well, that was a new experience. But without any of those facades, without tone or melody or even a full room of loud music, it was an incredibly vulnerable experience. And then on, you know, the um, maybe the sillier end of the coin, 
looking back at shots, I got to see my chin on so many angles. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I've got more than one chin. <laughs> so, so look, it was, um, again, you, and you questioned everything in the same way potentially with music. You sit back and you'll hear a melody that you've sung and you know that it's not pitch perfect. You sit back or maybe think that you've oversung something. There were a lot of moments here which required Kyron to be quite brooding and quite considered and you know, constantly questioning, am I being, you know, putting too much into this or too little? Um, yeah, so much to consider and uh, yeah, I know I have so much to learn in that space. Grace. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what was the hardest scene and why? myself um, for, for Tide as well she's um, I guess the story kind of follows these two teenagers who are quite um, that were stuck in Canberra here and um, although it's maybe not as prominent as as Tyron's need to get out Tide also experiences she's stuck in routine she's got some stuff going on at home um, she's in a degree that she doesn't want to be in um, so she it feels trapped as well, but she really is pushing um, Kyron to get out. So seeing him make that break and knowing that she's left behind is quite a, a, a taxing moment for her. So for me as the actor, to try and allow that emotion and vulnerability to hit me and so I can like, get that point across, um, that was my hardest. And we filmed that up front of GIO, and we have a great, great is <laughs> game. It's a Brumbies game. 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 I'm not a particularly angry person. <laughs> uh, road rage is a foreign concept to me. Uh, and there was a scene that really required me uh, to kind of turn it on. And that was a really new experience, which required a lot of practice in the car. And, uh, <laughs> um, I apologize to the girl in the Suzuki Swift next to me for I was shouting at her. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was really foreign to me. And um, yeah. I'd love to just buddy quickly, sorry, then we'll go to you, Mark. Um, and we were amazed. Um, firstly, I think it was on the second day that I, Toby had to film that scene with Michelle fighting in the house, and yet Toby's like such a happy, chill person. I was like, sorry, mate, you gotta come. You gotta get a bit of dog in you. you gotta get a bit of dog. <laughs> and he did like superbly. Like, me and Jimmy just watching through the camera, going, wow, this is gonna be good. And then the sad, wonderful scene where she was. I just turned around, boom, she was crying. It was unreal. And that was on the last day of filming. That was really specific that we scheduled it on the last day. Could have maybe scheduled it without the Brumbies. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, we, we were just amazed. And again, me and Jimmy looked at each other in between takes. And it was like, how lucky are we to get actors like this? Mark. Um, first of all, massive congrats. You can see Thank the blood, you. sweat, and tears in every scene. And it looked like a mammoth effort. So just want to get out, that out of the way. I guess my main question was, was there a point in pre, during or post-production where you could feel the whole film clicking, where you were like, yep, yeah, we've got something on our hands here, it's game on. Do you want to give your take and I'll give mine? Yeah, I reckon we kind of, because we did like scenes from all ends of the film at different times, like we're not shooting in chronological kind of order at all, uh, we kind of got to see it come in dribs and drabs, but I don't really feel like it was until we actually screened it on our um, lecture screen in our lecture theatre, and that's when it actually was like, whoa, this is happening, this is actually real. Yeah. So probably wasn't really until the back end of production. For me, it was a little bit different. Honestly, it was on the first day, um, especially because we didn't have any expectations, or I didn't have any expectations. 
Um, I was just like so stoked that I got Sav, Michelle and Toby on board and of course Jimmy. Uh, anything that Jimmy films is beautiful. So I was like, well, that's going to be great. And obviously these guys are beautiful too. Um, but I was just so stoked to have everyone on board. But on the first day of filming and seeing some scenes actually be acted and played out and then watching it back in the edit, I was like, holy shit, this is going to be unreal. So yeah, a bit of a different take, but I like it. Any more questions? Matt Bell. Um. Well done, um, obviously. I just wanted to ask um, if there is going to be a sequel to this, and if not, what, <laughs> as a storyteller, what would it be? Yeah, uh, we really, really want to do a second one. I'm already writing the script as soon as we finish the first one. It's actually in our rap video. We were like, Yay, we're finished! Until the next one! Um, so hopefully, like, sometime next year, I've kind of told these guys I'd really like to do another one, so scheduling is the thing, but yeah, absolutely. But it'll be a little bit different. It's going to be set four years later, uh, so they'll be here about 25, 26. Kyron's obviously moved off to near Byron Bay, living the dream, and it will start off with this film. The, the film started with Kyron and it ended with Ty. With the second one, it will start with Ty and her trying to go on a little bit of a journey and then they bump into each other again and we explore friendship at an older age. And also the friendship of Ty feels abandoned. Like he got to leave and live his dream and escape abuse and things like that. Whereas Ty was kind of stuck in Canberra. So yeah, it's really hoping to do a second one. Any other questions? Yes. What inspired the name change? Oh, great question. Yeah, awesome. I was looking back on that actually uh, on the first version of the script and it said unnamed script and at the top it said possible name chain in brackets, unbreakable bond. Um, and also because uh, talking about the links of violence and things like that, you know, that happened like with the character of Frankie. A lot of the time with alcoholism and abuse, it's a pattern. Um, but also, I really like to name Chain because part of the story is even though they're like in their late teens, early 20s, they're super poor, so they don't have cars, so they're riding on their bikes. So originally it was two characters riding on their bikes, but Toby's a wicked skater. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Captain has Chain. Yeah. Any more? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I feel like... Uh, this is for more for the actors. I feel like you guys had some like really good chemistry and you had just explained that you'd only met to film this film. How did you guys kind of like get to know each other so that you could convey the Yeah, how did you do that? Um, I'm gonna say that Sav helped me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> At almost every corner, I would turn around and say, what do you think? <laughs> and I don't know, there's something really beautiful in your personality and it's just the way that you are that is very inviting and open and you give a space, at least for me, to be vulnerable. It's something I'm really thankful for. Um, and so yeah, I think not so much of a method behind the madness, but a very, very fortunate question. <laughs> Same with Toby. Yeah, we, we definitely we met on um we did a cold like cold read kind of day camera testing, um and everybody in this room that knows Tobes, he's an absolutely wonderful guy. And uh, I said to you just walking in as well that you, the ability for you to be so present for me in the film as well and during the filming um, just allowed me to kind of access that vulnerability as well. So um, with acting, it's all about kind of we tend to get really inside ourselves, um, think about yes, what we go. need to portray, but um, I just gave it all to Toby and he, um, he really held my heart with his hands there and, and we made some magic, so it was, it was beautiful and he's an absolutely amazing guy and I'm very fortunate to know him. So. <laughs> what the time is, but we'll just keep going until I kick us out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, congratulations to you. You did a great job. Um, I've got an important question. How many guitars did you have to switch? Oh. <laughs> oh. Just the one. We love that scene so much. Um, yeah, we just had the one good old green shed shopping. 
Uh, yeah, and like obviously we kind of decked it out with some stickers and things, and we shot the scene where Kyra and uh, Toby is playing the guitar, so right. we already had that scene, so we had to use that guitar. But we were, we were pretty cruising. Michelle's a bitch. Like, we were, I told her, like, it's going to be a one take wonder. Just fucking go for it. Like, smash the living shit out of it. And she did. And Jimmy was ready. They did, like, one little test. And no, we did, like, four. Oh, did you like, oh. 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 Just, like, we were just whipping it back and forth. Oh, there you go. I don't know what I was doing. But it was great. It was so much fun. Great question. Any other? Chrissy, Jane! <laughs> uh, this a question for all four of you. Just wondering if there were any inspirations both for the script writing or for the acting in terms of like other Australian films or like any films in general. What was the inspiration for all of this? Do you guys want to go first? Okay. Um, yeah, so I was hugely inspired by the film Six Festivals. So it's done by my favourite director, Makario D'Souza, who's a wonderful filmmaker and uh, from Maroubra. He's like done documentaries as well. But that film, it was just released just before I wrote the script. So like super important in pushing me to write a script because, man, that was my first script and only script. So it was rough. I didn't really know what to do. But in that film, it follows three teenagers and it's two boys, one girl, and they're all like heterosexual. But... There's no romantic connection at all in the film, and you never see that, like ever. And they're best mates, and the connection was beautiful, and one of the actors, Rasmus King, it was his first time being an actor, and he was a surfer and stuff, so it really reminds me of Toby. Um, but yeah, it's just this wonderful Australian film about music, about friendship, about hardship, that also had elements of abuse, alcoholism, really tough topics, but it's super heartwarming. And to finally see a film about teenagers without a dramatic kiss at the end made me really happy because I think that the connections in our life, romantic connections are super important, but like loving your friends platonically are the most important connections I think in life. So yeah, Six Festivals is huge. It was the exact same film actually. Yeah, um, it's good. So the way, <laughs> the way that they shot it, I reckon. They shot in a real casual manner. I managed, I was lucky enough to get a few days on that set as just like a PA. But like they shot in a very casual manner. So everyone was just friendly and just, it was shot like a student film is the way they described it. And that's kind of what I wanted to be. I didn't want it to be super stressed. We had these big setups everywhere. And when I set up the camera, it's just like it's there, it's ready to go. And we did lots of handheld shooting so we could see where the actors were all comfortable and then see where the camera fits in around that. And yeah, it's made a real fun experience rather than stressful. Yeah. I think it was yeah. inspiration, yeah, yeah. Oh, inspiration. Well, yeah, um, actually it was, so quite early on in filming, um, Tills sent us a big document and she had a heap of um, cropped scenes as well that she wanted particular emotional approaches and directions at, at the scenes that we had to film. Um, so we had a fair whack. There was some um, from both Six Festivals and Boston Rocket as well. Yeah. yeah. Ladybird as well? Not Ladybird. Oh, Ice. I decided to be blue. Cubic time, Blues is massive yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I think I threw a bit of inspiration on Lady Bird as well. Yeah, nice. So it's kind of drawing, um, like looking at that, um, I guess through the lens of a teenage girl as well, growing up in um, in a particular this society and this time and the pressures of that as well on her and what to do, who to be, everything. Um, so we kind of, yeah, it was just kind of finding pieces that I enjoyed character work as well and combining it into one. I'm just now discovering the research before. <laughs> <laughs> but I was confident by until coming up basically saying, I just want you to be yourself mm, in this. Yes. Um, and, and so that's what I gave my best to crack at. <laughs> Tails, did you write all the dialogue? Or did you guys have a little bit of creative flow in there as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think we changed like a few lines here and there. I kind of said to the actors, I was like, the, what's on the script isn't verbatim, like see where you go, let it flow a little bit. And a few of the things that I wrote originally when they'd speak and I was like, ooh, that just doesn't sound right or sound like the character. But yeah, obviously I, um, keeping with the authenticity, I was really, um, 
glad to have Toby and Sab because the script is very Bogan. Um, and I wanted it to be Bogan. I wanted it to be the way I writ it, like people wrote it. <laughs> 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 oh, I write things when it's been <laughs> But the way I wrote it was very Bogan. Like I think most filmmakers would read it and go, Ooh, this is not very cinematic. Um, but yeah, I wanted it to sound super authentic. So yeah, change a few lines here and there. Toby, I knew Toby was coming into his own because he came up to me, I think it was day two or three of filming, we did five days, uh, on the late scene and he was like, oh, I thought of, I thought of like this line um, to say to Tide about Frankie and it was that we'd been filming with these plastic wine bottles, uh, wine cups, so he was like, I think it'd be really interesting to say that Frankie's bought these plastic wine cups so she can throw them at my head. So, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit of um, improv, which was awesome. Nicola did a lot of improv as well. Yeah, lots of improv going on. Yeah. It was rad. So rad. Yes. We have a question for James. You said you were doing a lot of like pretty like casual on the fly stuff with filming. Did that mean like how much did you shot this beforehand? Uh, with like your storyboard, did you did you specifically know what you were after, or did you kind of wait till on the day to kind of figure it out? So we <laughs> I wrote a oh, it's probably like 12, 13 page shot list. Every shot was written out, but then we got like day two in the film, and we're like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> so we just rock up in the morning, figure out like we just kind of read off the script and walk it through, and then see where the camera fitted around, and then flash it accordingly. So. <laughs> Pretty running gun. James. Um, congratulations. Thank you all of you. Um, do you have a favourite part of the whole experience? Ooh, do you mean like in the film or just, just experience? The experience of being together. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so many. Like, it's hard to pick one out, but I reckon it was day three and we were filming. Um, at near like Wynum on the road, which was so like so illegal, like <laughs> so not what you're supposed to do in proper filmmaking safety wise. And we had your car actually aiming because it has a sunroof. Uh, so we did a really like janky shitty rig tripod up on through the sunroof and just said to these guys like, ride and then if there's a car, go left. <laughs> so thank God there was music over that because you can just hear us going, oh this looks sick, fucking go left. Fun, and then we all got Maccas after and we were just like, whoa man, we're making the film and we're feeling comfortable and yeah. I reckon, yeah, it was probably that scene as well. Yeah. Because like, yeah, we, <laughs> we had the tripod like, oh, strapped down from tie downs through the sunroof. Like, so, <laughs> and then like, sometimes I'd go around in corners, so I had to be standing up through it, just panning around. <laughs> and then like, we did another bit where I was hanging out the window and shooting out them and like you can see one in the very last shot, there's like a bright light starting to beam onto Sam and Toby. And that's a car coming the other way. And we're just like, nah, just go, they'll stop, they'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same night as well. Yeah. Um, Sam, what's your favourite part of the whole experience? Um, I think spoke to the euphoria of, of the film and that escape that the characters were having. At that time, it was like they're finally getting away. And um, for, I think, us as actors, and then that translates into the character work, is that it was quite a euphoric um, feeling just to be riding through the night and just, just going for it. And, and these guys just saying, just go as fast as you can and we'll, we'll just track along. So that was probably some of my favourite scenes. So, yeah. Massive shout out to Sav for towing me on the <laughs> no. I was a bit puffed. <laughs> um, but sorry to break trends, but my favourite scene was on the ground point. Oh, nice. Uh, there was a moment there where we got to lie down, um, and I think a lot of time in friendship conversations you broach an issue, and then you dive away from it, much like a fish approaching a lure. Sort of take a nibble at it, and then walk away. 
and there was a beautiful moment there where we kind of got to communicate through touch with hands over our head. And in that moment, I finally felt like I was acting. You know, it felt good. It felt like I was in a scene, and that's a new feeling for me. It's something very special. You already said a potential sequel, but what's next for you guys? Is this the start of an acting career, or do you want to start directing more? Or? <laughs> 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 well, um, I'm extremely grateful to have met Jimmy through uni because now we've done this film. We're just like, we're very similar people, we like the same project, so. We've got a lot of projects we want to do. Jimmy's currently writing a script, which I think will be our next short film. Um, but we really want to do like some sports documentaries too, a mockumentary. But you know, this is all chat, chat, chat. Let's get some plans done. Um, so yeah, Jimmy's writing a script at the moment that I think we will hopefully film like by the end of the year or early next year. Um, but yeah, many plans. And then of course, Chain Two is it's on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, yes, yeah, similar. We have a big goal to shoot Chain 2 or my film uh, down the coast. Yes. Just because South Coast is sick. <laughs> Surfing footage! Yeah, so I think that's probably the next big thing. Just, yeah, camera. Behind the camera is really what I want to do. Um, so I am really lucky. I, uh, in the last two years, studied um, film and television acting in Sydney. Um, and shout out to my beautiful friends Lil and Noah who came down today from Sydney to watch here. Um, and yeah, so for me, acting was um, is my creative outlet, and it's something that I want to pursue. So I yeah, fresh out of out of school last year, this was the kind of my first um, thing that I was a part of, and so great to have gone on the last few months. Um, whilst I'm like making my way into the industry with auditioning and um, agencies otherwise is, is really special and it's all, I always remember this, so yeah, that's me, that's me. I'd do it again. <laughs> yeah, um, I would love to throw myself into anything creative to sort of tell stories in any capacity. Music um, videos? Music videos? <laughs> yeah! yeah. Um, really, anywhere, anywhere that I have an opportunity to invest in a story and portray it somehow, I would love to be involved in. I don't know what that looks like, but if you're happy, I will be there. Thanks. Thanks. Anybody else? Oh, Thank you so much for asking questions. We're Thanks so much for coming! Yeah.